This example is from the text Conceptual Dynamics. Specifically, this is example problem 6.5-3. The problem statement reads, the 30,000 kilogram fighter aircraft shown has a primary engine that generates 200 kilonewtons of thrust during takeoff. Neglecting the effect of air drag, determine the acceleration of the aircraft and the reaction forces experienced by the front landing gear wheel and each of the two rear landing gear wheels, while it is still traveling horizontally on the ground. Also neglect the rolling friction of the wheels. So we read the problem. We try to understand what's given and what it is we're being asked to find. We're specifically told the mass of the fighter aircraft is 30,000 kilograms. We're also told the thrust force being applied to the aircraft, we'll call that T, which is equal to 200,000 newtons. We're asked to find the acceleration of the aircraft. And then we're also asked to find the reaction forces experienced at the wheels, at both the front wheel, so we'll call that normal force A, and the two rear wheels. We'll call each of those normal force B. So after having read the problem, we basically understand what's going on. It's helpful to draw a picture. So this is a kinetics problem. We're looking at forces and how they relate to the motion of the, of the body. And so the picture in general will include a free body diagram. We've got the thrust force already included. Um, we applied the weight force at the center of mass or the center of gravity in this case of the aircraft. And then we also have the normal forces. One at the where the front wheel contacts the ground and sub A, and then the two where the rear wheels contact the ground. We'll call those N sub B. Since we have a rigid body, we need to take care to show the application of the forces at their respective locations. You know, since we're considering the size of the body, um, we need to know their locations to understand the moments induced by the forces. In this case, the rigid body is traveling in pure translation. So every point on the body has the same acceleration. So if we do some of the forces times mass times acceleration, um, every point on the rigid body has the same acceleration. Um, so we can just call it A. We may also find it helpful to sum the moments. When we do that, we'll choose to sum the moments about some reference point. Um, looking at the picture, since the aircraft is in pure translation, we may be tempted to say that the moments sum to zero because the, because the body isn't rotating. Um, but, but that actually isn't correct. It turns out that when we're in pure tr translation, the moments sum to a radius crossed with the mass times acceleration. And the way that we sort of tried to explain this in, in class was um, to think of this as a kind of inertial force. You know, so when we think of a rigid body and it's accelerating, let's say, you can sort of imagine it kind of squatting kind of uh, pitching up a little bit due to the acceleration, uh, due to the inertia of the, of the fighter aircraft. In class, we specifically referenced D'Alembert's principle, where we added a fictitious inertial force, um, MA, at the center of mass that, in essence, translated this dynamics problem into a statics problem. It translated the sum of the forces so that they equaled zero and the sum of the moments so that they equaled zero. And so we could still do that. We could add this sort of fictitious force and consider the forces and moments as summing to zero. Instead, I'm gonna use the equations in this form and I'm gonna go ahead and add this mass times acceleration here at the mass center. I'm gonna make it dashed uh, to identify that it's not an actual force, um, but just to put it there to help us remember to include it when we sum the moments in this equation. So now that we've set up the problem, we can go ahead and begin the solution. 
We'll go ahead and copy everything that we've identified on this slide to the next slide. So here we have what we're given and what we're trying to find. Here we have our free body diagram. We're going to use a Newtonian mechanics approach, uh, some of the forces, some of the moments. I'll go ahead and define an XY coordinate system where the right hand rule gives us that the moments are positive coming out of the paper or in the counterclockwise direction. We'll begin with Newton's second law, some of the forces in the X equals mass times acceleration in the X direction. In this case, the only force that acts in the X direction is the thrust. It's equal to the mass times acceleration, where the acceleration of the aircraft is entirely in the X direction. So we'll just call it A. We also have the sum of the forces in the Y direction. In this case, uh, we have the normal forces. Um, we have Na, which is upwards in the positive direction. We actually have two rear wheels. So we'll say that there's two normal forces at point B. Those are also in the positive direction. And then we have the weight force acting downward in the negative direction. The aircraft does not accelerate vertically. So its acceleration in the vertical direction is zero. So they all sum to zero. Call this equation one, this equation two. So the X direction equation we can immediately use to solve for the acceleration. We have the T, the thrust on, on the one side we divide through by the mass. So the thrust is 200,000 newtons, the mass it's 30,000 kilograms. 200,000 divided by 30,000 is approximately 6.67. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So the kilograms cancel. We're just left with meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of the aircraft, which was one of the things we were asked to find. We look at the y direction. We know the weight or can calculate the weight from mass times g. We have the two other unknowns, uh, the normal force at the front wheels and the normal force at the rear wheels. However, we have two unknowns and only one equation, so we don't have enough information to solve for it. Uh, we need to add a third equation, and that third equation will be the sum of the moments. Okay. We have some flexibility in choosing which point we want to sum the moments about. Uh, in this case, we have two unknowns, NB and NA. So the smart thing to do would be to sum the moments about either point B or point A, because that would eliminate one of the two moments induced by those two forces. So sort of arbitrarily, let's go ahead and sum the moments about point B. That way, the moment arm of the normal force B is zero, and hence it doesn't induce a moment about point B. And then we recall that we're in pure when we're in pure translation, the sum of the moments equals the radius of the mass center with respect to the point B crossed with the mass times the acceleration. Going ahead, here we have the moments um, about B. The thrust force induces a moment. Um, it causes a moment in the clockwise direction, which is opposite what we've defined to be positive. So that's negative. The moment arm between this thrust force and point B, it's the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the point. Uh, this distance from the ground where the point B is to the center of mass is 2.5 meters. The thrust force is 0.5 meters below the center of mass. So this distance is 2 meters. And so that is the moment arm of that force. 
the weight force induces a moment about point B since it causes also a moment or causes rotation in the clockwise direction. It too is negative. The distance from the line of action of the weight, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the weight to the point B is this distance 4. So that's its moment arm. We then have a moment induced by the normal force at the front wheels. Since it causes rotation in the counterclockwise direction, it is positive. Its moment arm, the perpendicular distance, is 4 plus 1.5 for a total of 5.5 .5 meters. So those are all of the moments induced by forces about point B. And then that is all equal to R cross MA, where the radius is the position of the center of mass G with respect to the reference point B. So that is that vector. We can actually determine this vector, its I and J components. It has a component of 4 in the positive i and a component of 2.5 in the positive j. We know the acceleration. It's entirely in the positive i direction. And we can perform that cross product. The other way to do it is the way that we were doing the moments. You know, These moments are equal to r cross f. Um, but we, we were able to sort of, in our head, uh, figure out what the moment arm, the perpendicular distance was. We can do the same thing for this cross product. So we can imagine this force MA in the positive I direction. So it's, you know, if we imagine it to be an inertial force, it's causing a rotation in the clockwise direction, which is in the negative direction. And then it has a moment arm. We look at the line of action of MA and the perpendicular distance to B is 2.5 meters, the distance, the perpendicular distance from B to the center of gravity, center of mass. OK. And so that sets up that equation. Looking at this, we know what T is. We know what W is. We don't know what NA is, but we know what M and A are. So the only unknown is the normal force A. Uh, and we can solve this equation for, for NA. So going forward and doing that, I have minus MA, so minus 30,000 kilograms times the acceleration, 6.67 meters per second squared times 2.5 meters. I can add the thrust force times its moment arm to the right-hand side. So 200,000 newtons times 2 meters. I can add the weight, which is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times its moment arm. And then I divide through by the 5.5 meters to isolate Na. The meters cancel out of all the moment arms. And we're just left with kilogram meters per second squared, or newtons in the, in the numerator. We punch this into our calculator, and it works out that the normal force A is approximately 195,800 newtons. Okay. So that gives us another one of the quantities we were asked to find. Finally, we want to find the normal force B. Um, we can get that by going back to one of our force equations, the sum of the forces in the y direction. So from equation number two, we can solve for NB. We add the weight to the right-hand side. We subtract. Na from the left-hand side, we divide through by 2. 
So the weight is 30,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Subtract the normal force at A, which is 195,800 newtons. We divide by 2. And we get that the normal force at each of the wheels, at each of the rear wheels, is approximately 49,250 newtons. If we were looking to double check our solution, um, one option would be to go ahead and sum the moments about point A and see if it uh, works out correctly um, if we had an equation of this form. So that brings us to the conclusion of this example.